Have you ever tried to cut a spaghetti squash before you cook it? It's pretty tough to do, right? So pressure cooking it makes it very easy to cut. You don't even have to get the seeds out first or poke holes. So we're gonna do that first, but then I'm gonna show you the best way to cut it so you get super long spaghetti squash strands for your recipes. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today, I'm gonna to put this in quotations, recipe, it's not really a recipe, it's more of a technique for cooking spaghetti squash, but it is so easy to do and it is almost completely hands off. So the first thing you wanna do is get a spaghetti squash that's between two and a half pounds to three pounds. Those are gonna fit the best in the six and a half quart Ninja Foodi. You can probably get one a little bit bigger for the eight quart. Then you can use the rack or the basket it, either one is fine. I'm gonna use the basket um, just because I've found sometimes the tops are a little high on the rack, but depending on the shape of your spaghetti squash, either one is perfectly fine as long as it fits, right? All right, so I have got the, the basket in with the legs on in the six and a half quart Ninja Foodi. I have one cup of water. This is just plain old tap water. Do not heat your water for this recipe or you'll undercook your spaghetti squash. Just get plain, you know, cold or room temperature water. And we're just gonna throw it in. And that is it. We don't have to poke holes, we don't cut it, nothing. So put it in there, line up your arrows here, turn the lid so it seals, and then make sure the valve in the back is to the sealed position. And we're gonna take the time, the pressure cook on high, and we're gonna take the time to 17 minutes. Now, I've been doing a lot of practicing with spaghetti squash to get the timing down, and this is what I found. 15 minutes of pressure cook time with a 15 minute natural release is wonderful if you want to have a texture of like a rice noodle for a stir fry. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely delicious. They're just a little bit crunchy and they just, oh, they're wonderful in a stir fry. Really wonderful. Um, but. 17 minutes was the best timing for something that you're gonna make like a spaghetti or, or whatever sauce, even a, a shrimp scampi or something like that. I found 17 minutes was a good timing for me. Now, you might wanna go 20 minutes. If you like a really soft uh, spaghetti squash strand, then take it to 20 minutes. But no matter what time, 15, 17, or 20, make sure you do a 15 minute natural release. And what's gonna happen before the 15 minutes is up is your pin in the back is most likely gonna drop. But probably around 12 to 13 minutes, your pin's gonna drop. Leave it alone for the whole 15 minutes. It needs that extra time in the pot to finish cooking. The residual heat and steam in there keeps cooking it. Then we let it cool, and then I'm gonna show you the coolest way to cut your spaghetti squash because I'm sure a lot of people do it much differently and this way you can get really long strands of noodles so it really mimics a pasta. All right, so it took the pot about 10 minutes to come up to pressure. Then we pressure cooked for 17 minutes. We did a 15 minute natural release. The button in the back did drop down at about nine or 10 minutes into the natural release, but I let it go the entire 15. That's really important. You wanna let it go. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and open up the lid. There'll be some steam in there. And we're ready to cool down our spaghetti squash. Now, if you wanted to, you could throw it in some ice water. It's just gonna stop the cooking right away, and that's fine. Speed up the process, but I don't usually do that. I usually just go ahead and set it right on my counter, let it cool down, and this is the time that I'll whip up my spaghetti sauce or whatever sauce that I wanna serve with my spaghetti squash. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and when we come back, I'm gonna show you exactly how to cut this spaghetti squash, and you're gonna be amazed. So I ended up popping this in to some, a bowl of ice water just to chill it a little bit faster because I noticed that it had split a little bit, which is perfectly okay, don't worry about that. They have split sometimes in my test of trials and, and errors before and sometimes they haven't. Don't worry about that. But I wanted to stop the cooking because I didn't want to overcook my uh, spaghetti squash. I don't like it to be really, really soft. So let's hope that it worked out. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's fine, perfectly fine, but you might see some liquid coming out, uh, which is just some water. All right, so you can see where it, it kind of cracked open. Well, that's usually where everybody cuts. So usually, I see people cutting their spaghetti squash lengthwise, 
And then if they're going to roast it, they open it up and they roast it and, and that's fine. However, that's not how the spaghetti squash strands come out the longest because that's not the natural way of the uh, flush of the vegetable. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And if you want to get really long strands, this is a quick little tip. So what I do is take the end off and usually what I'll do is start it with a sharp point of a knife, just kind of sharp, just kind of make a little start here. You can actually see it, the, the skin just sort of falls right off. I mean, this is like so easy to do. All right, so I just cut the end off right like that. Perfect, 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 perfect. And I will cut the other end off just a little bit. We don't need to get rid of that. We can use that too. See if, it, oh, that went right through. Oh my gosh, this is like a dream. I mean, an absolute dream. All right, so now the exciting part. So instead of peeling it and then having to deal with all the seeds inside, what I do is I cut wheels. So cut straight down, straight down, get through that skin, and then let me show you how the strands go. All right, now a lot of people say that, oh, it's so much easier to get rid of the seeds before you cook it, um, but I don't think so. I find it just as easy to do it this way. So let me show you. First of all, the skin will just peel right off. So you can just peel that right off. And you can even get some out of here if you want, but they're not gonna be long strands. I'm gonna set that to the side. And then I take my knife, and where I see the seeds and the inside starting, I just make a little cut. And separate it from the outside here. So we make sure we get all those seeds off. All right, pretty good. Then lift it up. And I'm hoping I can show you this. But the strands go around this way, okay? So the way to get the longest strands of spaghetti squash is to cut it into wheels. Now you don't have to do it my way. You could cut it right in half if you wanted, but cut it in half width-wise, okay? Not lengthwise. But this is how I do it. And then I just take it, sort of break it there, and then just fluff it up. So start to just fluff them. You can use a fork, kind of works better. And then separate them out and put them right into our bowl. Now this one is a little bit more done um, than previous batches. I'm not sure why. Could have just been that there was more seeds, less flesh. So there are variables in every, um, you know, every vegetable, every food really. So I would probably have wished that I just cooked this 15 minutes, but the previous one that I cooked 15 minutes and did the 15 minute natural release was crunchy, you know? I mean, and not exactly what you would want for a spaghetti noodle. Uh, it was perfect for the rice noodles, but anyway, so use your judgment. You can always, uh, you know, Cook it 15 minutes, cut it. You can bake it again if you need it softer. Stir fry it a little bit, you know, heat it up that way. Steam it to get it a little bit softer. So there are ways. I really wish I would have done 15 minutes on this, but uh, like I said, that one came out crunchy. So now I just do the same thing. There we go. So I'm gonna finish this up, give my spaghetti sauce a stir, get it all on a plate and give it a taste. All right, so I finished up getting all the strands out of the spaghetti squash and it's overcooked a little bit, you know, and I'm a little disappointed about that. But anyway, it's okay, it's gonna taste fine, um, but I didn't get as long of strands as I wanted. So definitely go 15 minutes and then do a little saute if they're not quite soft enough for you. Or if you don't care about long strands, then you know, go 17, you'll be fine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Put this on the plate here and get a little bit of, I've got some turkey meatballs that I'm working on a recipe for, so I'll grab one of those and a little bit of sauce here, which is just a real quick tomato spaghetti kind of sauce that I made. 
And there we go. And then of course, a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese and some red pepper flakes if you want it. But look at that. I mean, I love using spaghetti squash for these kinds of things um, because it really looks like pasta. And it has a good, it just, it works really well with spaghettis and shrimp scampies and that kind of stuff. So, oh, so we'll do a little twirl here. And it's not too bad, not nearly as long as spaghetti noodles, but you can get them pretty long if you undercook it a little bit. All right, let's give it a taste. Mmm. Now the texture is perfect at 17 minutes. Uh, you know, 15 minutes, I told you, it was like a rice noodle. And really great in stir fries, though. But the texture here, hands down, better. So hey, it's a trade-off, right? If you want it to be perfect texture, go 17 minutes. If you want it to be longer strands, go 15. And uh, that'll be good. All right. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Absolutely delicious. So this is a turkey meatball and it's super easy to do, and they're absolutely delicious. I can't wait to get the recipe out for you guys. Mmm, mmm.